In this, easily the most harrowing episode in NSFW show history, Brian is under siege. War has come to this podcast. Will we survive? Will we muse about the fate of Hitler should he be in a sequel of It's a Wonderful Life? Will the band Otsego play with such wicked force that your face will melt off into a puddle that your dog will lick up? Yes, it's all happening on this edition of NSFW Show. Starting now. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 83 for July 5th, 2011. It's a wonderful life, too. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. And by Squarespace, the fast and easy way to create a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off your new account for six months, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code NSFW7. Welcome to yet another episode of the internet's favorite late night fun spot. I'm Justin Robert Young. I normally What's I don't up? I'm Brian do Brush. Theoretically being heard right now. I'm not yes. entirely sure. My best friend of all friends, Brian Brushwood, is joining us. However, uh, you know, I don't know what's happening. Maybe there's an electrical storm in space, but we've had nothing but tech kerfuffles tonight. Uh, let me tell you something, Justin. If I may, first of all. I can disclaim rumors that the show is now called No Schwood for the Win. That is not true. NSFW no. still stands for what it's always stand, stood for. Second of all, there are times that I will definitely be broadcasting from an undisclosed location. Apparently, my bunker's under fire, Justin. Apparently, I'm under attack, and it's causing the aliens to zap all my internets, and that means I have uh, headphones on. And in fact, yeah. I have a, a secondary Skype connection so that when I get dropped, which I will sooner or yeah. later, they, they want, want this, this message. message to be stopped. And when that happens, I will have a secondary input here. Which is what we've gone to right now. Uh, yes, yes. Exactly. apparently charges against Casey Anthony are not the only thing getting dropped tonight. Also, Brian's <laughs> internet is, is joining, joining the cause. And I'll tell you what, the, the, the tech issues don't stop there. Uh, apparently, we're also having 
a, a tech problem with our guest tonight, Kevin Smith. Is Kevin on? Uh, Jeremy, he, were we able to get Kevin? It sounded Kevin? like he was on. It sounded Kevin, like he was on. Kevin Smith of Smodcast Internet Radio. Sir, Kevin, are yeah. you there? All right. You know well, what? apparently, I, I, hopefully I we'll be able to get Kevin on uh, a little later uh, in, in the show. So, uh, Brian, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Here's the thing. We, we, need, we need to open the kimono on this one. We need to oh, just, yeah. no, let, no, let's no. just, let's be... just, let's just let it all hang out real quick. Let, let me tell you something. If you thought it was awkward to be between the sheets with Bri Bri and the gerbs, you, that ain't nothing compared to being inside the kimono, which is where you're about to be. Occasionally, exactly. we have real lives that take us to real locations all over the United States. And occasionally we have internet connection issues. And occasionally we have guest booking issues. Yes. Issues. We, we issues issue as well. Guest booking. SU sounds like a uh, Hispanic guy who would sell you a used car. Like, <laughs> well, oh, where'd you get that car. Hyundai? Oh, I got it from uh, Miramar. A guy named SU sold it to me. <laughs> he used to be a brain surgeon down in Mexico, but now he, <laughs> he sells did. cars. He used that uh, old Mexico way. He gave uh, seizure treatments to children, and now he's selling Hondas. Dr. Esu. With, with, you know, this is frighteningly close to the, guy, to the actual gynecologist who came, uh, the one that Rhett and Link had Cuban, in that ad. Cuban uh, gynecologist, American car salesman. Yes, exactly. That's the one. Uh, look, here's the thing, party people, is uh, we've had the perfect storm of everything going crazy. And as you know, whenever things go terribly wrong, what you do is you get inappropriately honest with the audience. And so that's why yeah. Justin and I, for the next 40 minutes, are going to share our greatest stories of failure. Yes. Justin. Okay. Yeah. No, we are. And listen, me and Brian were talking about this for the last four months, that we always wanted to do an episode where um, yeah, everything fell apart. And we talked about when we, we acted, as people fell we apart. We acted like everything was falling apart. And I was going to pretend like my internet was no good. And exactly. All, and yeah. then all of a sudden, you were going to pixelate like you were a disco floor and uh, <laughs> just be 8-bit bri-bri until uh, the cows come home. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what I've always wanted. Seriously, uh, what is, what is your, the moment of like your greatest... Uh, greatest failure. The greatest failure. I don't know. I mean, I would probably say, which I, I don't know. I mean, this, is, this might be even, uh, I mean, I guess I, if you start me off and maybe I'll be able to roll up, uh, roll up with one. Uh, okay. Well, look, people ask, uh, did I ever tell the story? Did I ever tell the story of, uh, of uh, when C.J. Johnson and I went to Las Vegas, and uh, I, I uh, the, the only time I've truly been embarrassed. I don't know if I've told this on an interview. No, interview. no, I... tell the story. Okay, so uh, 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 Las Vegas, two thousand three, we're at this convention, and uh, we uh, C.J.'s on some medicine where he can't drink, so we're buying drinks two at a time, and he's just handing them over to me. And when we play craps. No, wait, hold on. Why like, is it like, like that you guys have to keep a cosmic balance that like you, if he's not drinking, everyone else has to drink extra, like just so oh, yeah. everybody, like, like the chi of the group is maintained? Oh, I mean, because it would be crazy. That, that's the one reason to go to Vegas is because they give you free drinks. And it's like you don't not accept free, you don't get a Coke for your free drink or whatever, right? Sure, so, no. Uh, now, our whole thing is like we would like to make a lot of noise when we go to craps tables because craps is the one game where it's totally appropriate to scream and yell and get everything going. In fact, our favorite thing is to go to a dead table where nobody's really playing or laughing or talking or winning, make a bunch of noise and see if we can get other people to do these nonsense rituals that we have. For example, whenever you win, you cross your arms, you shout, hail Minoku, or whenever you lose, you shake your fist at the sky and say, curse you, gambler. And it's freaking awesome when you get random people to follow along, even though they have no idea. That it's like, it's like a weird tribe mentality. Shows. Like it's, yes. it's as if, you know, the, the natives of one of those villages in the Amazon came to you know, Manhattan, and all of a sudden had everybody doing their own little rituals, you know? Exactly, exactly. So, so again, and, and I have unofficial confirmation that C.J. Johnson has actually managed to get Tone Loke of, of Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina fame to say, yes. hell yeah, Minoku, while playing 
craps. Like he played at craps with Tone Loke and got Tone Loke to jump in. So, but, but yeah, I don't imagine that you uh, him getting one of Bebe's kids to uh, to 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 say Helmanuku is when you were most embarrassed, right? Uh, no, that's not. When I was most embarrassed was when, after playing all night long at a whole bunch of different casinos, we were heading through, we'd cut through the Golden Nugget, and it's three in the morning, and all we wanted to do was cut through because it was shorter, but we saw, like, one last table, and it was totally dead. And, we, and in fact, at the end of the table, there's this guy who's got, like, laying his head down, and we're like, oh, man, we got to hit this one more table. So we walk over, and we separate ap apart from each other because there's not two spaces side by side. And so, and so I'm, I'm looking, I get change, and I'm like, all right, come on, shooter, let's go, let's do this. And then they push the dice over to this guy at the end of the table. And I'm yeah. like, this guy's so drunk, he's, he's like asleep on the table. And the guy grabs these dice, and he just sort of flops them forward. They go maybe six inches. Now, now if you've yeah. ever played, if you've ever played yeah. craps, you know that. Heard that one before. The wall, they have to go back. Right. And so, meanwhile, they go like six inches, and the, 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 the pit boss, he's just like, shooter rolls an eights. And I'm like super <laughs> confused. I'm like, what is going on? And like stupidly loud, I say, dude, that guy is ripped. And then like the table goes cold, and the guy next to me turns and says, no, sir, severely handicapped. Oh, so you thought he was drunk. When instead he was, he could barely contain his muscle reactions because he is a handicapped gentleman. Uh, although, uh, you know, call me crazy, still an inappropriate place to be, the crab stable, if you're that handicapped. <laughs> well, well, hold on. There are plenty of people who have, like, cerebral palsy. They got 100% going on upstairs. They just got mixed up control for their body. He was one of those guys. But meanwhile... Uh, the appropriate thing was just to get the hell out of there, but at that point, it, like, it becomes a contest, so it's like, so it's like, I'm not going to let him win. So instead, I'm just like, oh, right, wait, whatever. Hold on. Well, Brian, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go ahead and move. I'm pulling the emergency brake on this story real quick so I can get into the mind of Brian Brushwood. At this point, okay. you've been embarrassed because you referred to a man who was physically handicapped as a total wasteoid. And your yep. reaction is uh, not... To be, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't realize. I mean, it's late at night. I've been partying. Uh, I do apologize. Instead, it's you're not gonna get the mess of me, huh? Look at me. I can move my arm. <laughs> it, it became a I can rock and roll the dice work moment. six inches. It it totally was. It was just like it was just like at that moment. It's like if I made it awkward, then it would be awkward. So like in my heart, I'm like. <laughs> oh, whatever. Hey, good job. Go. Oh, let's hail Minoku. Come on, shooter. Make us money. That kind of thing. <laughs> so, all right. So then you're like, you're like, oh, God. Yeah, you're one of the team, buddy. Come on. I'm not even yeah. going to acknowledge what I said. If the energy's high enough, then no one's going to realize it. Woo! Hail <laughs> Minoku. That's exactly what I did. And so, it, what's funny was like three minutes after I made that decision, I'm trying to be like this cheerleader. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at some point, I catch I catch a glimpse of CJ, and there's that brief moment when we lock eyes, and it and just you, CJ just CJ gives me what he's drunk. No, CJ stone sober. CJ yeah. gives me one of these though. He's just like, and I'm just, and I give him a, a sort of a, <laughs> you know, and that's yes. about as much communication as we have. Why? What do you got? What's the most What's the most messed up you've ever done? Um, uh, you got to have, everyone has one story when they're like, have you ever epically failed? Have you ever been so embarrassed? When did we were like, you wish you could take it all back? Oh, okay. No, I remember one. All right. So, um, uh, my, uh, my uncle recorded the, uh, the Holyfield Tyson fight. The one where, uh, Tyson bought Ben Holyfield's ear off, right? And yeah. uh, obviously, I'm in I'm in middle school. I guess I was in eighth grade, and uh, uh, it's the end of the school year. So there's a lot of just you know days where the teachers like, listen, tests are done. You just kind of got to be here, so you're not out, you know, uh, making fun of a cripple playing craps. Okay, um, okay, hold on, hold on. Which was always a I weird didn't... thing for him to say, uh, <laughs> you know, as just a random thing. It's uh, but like he always you. did, Mr. Corrente, eighth grade geography. Um, so, uh, he's like, he's like, Hey, listen, just kids bring in your favorite movies. So the day uh, that weekend before there was the fight, my uncle taped it off pay-per-view because, uh, I come from a fan of brigands and thieves. 
And I decide, like, all right, well, I'm going to bring in the fight. So I bring no in the way. fight. So you're in eighth grade, and you think, oh, well, this will be my little movie that will show. And you want to know what? That's not the embarrassing part, Brian, <laughs> because the teacher <laughs> allows us to play the tape. No, 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 no. The embarrassing part was what my uncle, in the scant window of 24 hours between recording the fight on Saturday and me bringing it no. into class on Monday, recorded no. over the end of the fight, which was... Uh, Take a guess. Take a wild guess. What showed I up mean, on? Pornography, but I want to know what. No, it was him screaming at a man with cerebral palsy who <laughs> was no, trying to play craps. <laughs> Screw you, dude. Screw you. Hardcore <laughs> pornography, Brian. Hardcore <laughs> pornography. Okay, so wait a minute. You brought it in, and did it actually get played like you're watching the fight? And first of all, everyone knows, like, oh, the part with the biting ear is coming up, right? Yes. Everyone's waiting. Everyone's waiting to see uh, this, this climactic part of the fight. And you want to know what? Actually, no, I'll tell you. I think it might have been Holyfield Tyson won. Or Holyfield won. So it didn't have that moment. It wasn't like everybody was okay. waiting for it. There was like, it, was, it was a fight that went, went to, to a decision. But, uh, yeah. Then all of a sudden, but it wasn't hardcore pornography. I'm, I'm lying. It was, well, it's almost more embarrassing. It's like at least hardcore pornography, you know exactly what's happening, uh, like immediately. If you just see, you know, the, the, the uh, space dock, you know, <laughs> ritual right, over, right, right. over again. Well, oh, by, um, by the way, yeah, thank you for sketching that out for those of us who didn't know. Uh, by the way, also, <laughs> I have another story about, uh, a story about hardcore pornography that, to, to tell, but this is, go ahead, okay. keep going. All right. But instead, it was like one of those like Playboy channel, like video pictorials. So it was just like for the first thing, it was like, like you know, imagine the uh, like if anyone has seen Brian Joe, you get yeah, like, as it buzz, transfers like, the, yeah, the and then all of a sudden it's like a bale of hay, like slowly panning over to a pitchfork, slowly panning over to a water trough, slowly panning over to Miss November bending over <laughs> a horse bow. I heard a story about a magician that was doing the cruise show circuit. And maybe it's better that I don't have any memory of who the guy was. But the story was the guy was such an a-hole the entire run that the very last night they took – they took because this is back in the days of everything was, was on audio tape. I can't listen to myself. They put everything on audio tape. So they, uh, they cut out they, – they went to like the last – one third of his big finale number and they just put in audio hardcore pornography audio which i'm sure you can imagine is a lot of moaning and screaming or whatever and sure. handed him back his tape knowing full well that the next major event this guy did he was going to pop it in and then it would get up to that point and then that's what they would hear are you that's, there yes i can hear you uh so did you do you know if it happened no, but that's the kind of thing that I am terrified of, is that's why I'm always respectful and nice to everyone at every show we go to. <laughs> well, there we go. Except for, of course, that one man on the crap stage. Okay, well, okay, the guy A handicapped like individual in that you mercilessly mocked and then tried to cover it up with even that more was, backhanded compliments. That was, that, okay, this is not helping things right now <laughs> and now right. i think that's the perfect segue for us to talk to our first sponsor <laughs> so, inside, God, the inside the kimono <laughs> with brian Ryan and the germs uh uh people are asking oh yeah no what happened after they saw the video turned to pornography uh there was a lot of there was a big red-faced uh jury uh running up to the diving like i was trying to stop the president from taking a bullet to to hit the stop button <laughs> Um, it was, it was it really just, everyone just kind of sat there. Because what else are you going to say, you know? It's just like, when all of a sudden, hardcore, when, when, when a naked lady just shows up on a school television, it's like, I don't even think that anybody was, I think there was a lot of ooing, maybe. But it's like, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's something that you would never expect to happen. It's like if, if a phoenix just emerged from the middle and just started squawking and knocking over desks. Like, like, was there this awkward pause where you're like, well, this isn't really happening. And then you slowly run up and then, and then you finally realize it is happening. Well, yeah, because well, it's one of those things where it's like, I noticed from like the first flicker in the screen where it's just like, what's that? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I God, guess. no. 
Oh my science! Uh, yeah, they and, said and it so, could never happen again. <laughs> and yet here we are. So, hey, right, if you were gonna you build, to... if you were gonna build the ultimate fail, like what do you think the ingredients are? Like of our stories, what do you think? How do you build the perfect fail? And I want everybody in the chat realm to uh, uh, to, to help us out. Just mocking a naked. I want to build a Failenstein. It, it would be it would be it would be an eighth grade Justin Robert Young mocking a handicapped naked girl in the boxing ring. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's like all mine except for the handicap thing. Because by the way, the most embarrassing part in your story, Brian, is the fact that you tried to cover it up instead of just owning up no, to an honest state. That's no, that's uh, that's uh, look, I think I think I have a strong contender. I think you mocking, and I love the fact that I make it you mocking her. I know, wait, wait, because I'm I'm trying to go abstract here. I'm saying if we we can go from scratch. It could be like. Like Hitler giving a speech and saying, uh, we need to eliminate all the gerbils. And everyone's like, what? Gerbils? Who cares? He wants to kill a bunch of gerbils? And he's like, oh, no, I mean, oh, I forgot. Never mind. I'm embarrassed. And then Hitler never started World War II. Although that would, <laughs> that would be a failure. Shame is a positive good. force. You're saying shame is what brings us all together and keeps people from turning evil. I'm just saying, how could we shame Hitler into not starting World War II? See, this is all. If we go back in our, time, we go back in is, time, and it's our only, our only mission is you know, the, we have the cigar chomping time general, and he's like, "Boys, you only have one goal: shame Hitler into not starting <laughs> World War II." I see. Okay, okay, okay. So we're back in time. By the way, I'm proud to announce that uh, I'm in an underground bunker in the middle of World War II, and I have this one-time opportunity to shame Hitler. So, chat real, I need you guys to tell me, what do I need to do to, to Hitler to stop? This needs to stop World War II and, uh, and make him so ashamed that he t devotes his life to crazing, you know, I don't know, raising puppies. <laughs> well, all right, so what, what's Hitler's big thing, right? You know, he's, he really likes crowds. You know, he likes power. Um... He's into you very know, distinctive Vizzi, facial hair. Jay Veezy suggests in the chat room that maybe I should, uh, a Christmas Carol style, show him a downfall parody <laughs> video from the internet in the future and explain <laughs> that if he doesn't change his ways, this is how he'll be regarded two generations from now. Oh, my God. How have they never, how is that like? That's that's the pod that took me back to World War Two times, and then and it was in Indonesia is where I is exactly where I the, showed up the, the intently Indonesian uh, audience member. That's so amazing. That's, all right, that's all right. how has so nobody bad. ever done a Hitler Christmas Carol? That's like uh, such an amazing <laughs> idea. <laughs> What's funny is I thought you were asking why nobody's written an actual Christmas Carol about Hitler. <laughs> On the first day of Hitler, the Third Reich gave to me. That's terrible, dude. That's the worst thing ever. <laughs> what is that? Um, no, but, I'm uh, saying that you retell the Dickens Christmas Carol, but with Hitler. Because, like, really, all you have to do is just extrapolate that a little bit more, right? Scrooge is a real a-hole. Who's done some mean things you're, you're, and then turns the his life problem, around? Justin is that uh, historically uh, Hitler's <laughs> a fact, and there's no going back unless you wanted to pull like a Inglorious Bastards thing and just rewrite history, like Hitler. <laughs> We're time Hitler. traveling. Listen, Brian. Now, are, can you see that this is a plan forming that we are trying to save the world here? Okay, we're trying to save the world from war. All we have to do after being time traveled back to Nazi era Germany is to elaborately stage a Christmas carol hoax using our knowledge of special effects and magic to make Hitler believe that he's on the wrong path in life to where it ends where he's just running down the street saying, oh, it's Christmas, it's Christmas. And he gives tiny, I don't know, Tim, Tim, you know what, or whatever. Actually, uh Cam Callahan in the chat room points out that there's always next year. We could do a Christmas Carol again and just have a different take on a Christmas Carol. I'm, I'm just saying, well, let's, let's, let's figure it out. How do, how do we, all right, so how does the Christmas Carol go? He has the, the ghost of Christmas past first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Past first, then present, then future. 
And view so we have, always like, they should all, the down. ghosts should all be Jewish, right? Of course. Or should they but, not? Uh, Would that spook them? Know. Are we spooking Hitler if we go Jew too early? I don't know. I, I, I uh, you, you gotta have something that like seduces him in. Um, I don't know. See, unfortunately, I don't know anything about Hitler except for he was the worst person who ever lived. This is the problem. And I don't even like wrapping my mind around, like, putting myself like, what would I do to convince Hitler? None of this is comfortable for me. Well, okay. I mean, no one said it was going to be what easy, you Brian. Do? You know what? Hey, Here's what I could if, get if, if You want to turn into we... new show Quits Weekly, no, uh, no, 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 then no. we can do Here's that. what I do want to do. I want to do... And it looks and like Brian's internet's kind of... Everything's awesome. All right, Brian, Hello. you have to repeat that because your internet went out. What? I was saying we should do It's a Wonderful Life instead. Where it's like... No! He's like, uh, but no, what? number one, how is that different? Well, because... because how does it make uh, it it's better? A life. He like, he's like, oh, maybe I should never have been born. And then we find out that if he was never born, everything's so much better. And everything's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> And then it's just but then like, why is he like, hey, screw you, Clarence? Because, you know, uh, or, wait, or, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Maybe this is, this one could be couched in reality. Maybe it could be the last night as they're attacking. And then he's like, he's like, I will fight to the end. I will fight forever. But then Clarence comes down and shows him what his life would be like. It's what the, the same Clarence, like. though, goes, from the movie. Here. And he's like, mein Gott in Himmel, I, uh, you're so right. And then he goes, and then that's it. But that doesn't avoid World War II. Now, no. I, what, I'm, what, I'm, what I'm saying, Brian, is I, I accept that that is the actual fact of how World War II ended. But I'm, I'm not I'm saying, saying that. I'm saying, I'm saying make it like it was that, it was Clarence that saved. This is going to be a sequel. It's a Wonderful Life 2. And we could have Clarence be the one that stopped World War II. Yes. It's a wonderful life too. Uh, yes. Clarence See, stops Hitler. Back. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Um, it's a wonderful Reich. People are saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a wonderful Reich. This is a terrible idea. <laughs> but although I do, I, I think it's worth it to make the movie just so Hitler is. You know, he's trying to seduce her. He's he's trying to court Ava Braun. He's like, like. Come on now, Ava. I'll just lasso the moon down for you. Huh? Huh? I'm Hitler on a date. Look at me. <laughs> can, we, can we talk about something else? Anything else at all? <laughs> <laughs> Brian, it's your podcast. You can take the conversation wherever you want. But I know. Well, here's what I want to do. Now, okay. If, yeah. If there were a movie, let's say you were able to throw together a few bucks and you thought you had what it takes to make to make a sequel to It's a Wonderful Life, It's a Wonderful Life Two, It's a Wonderful Reich, where would you <laughs> go to promote it? That's what I want to know. Because I'll tell you what, billboards ain't gonna take your money. Uh, broadcast television, they ain't gonna take your money. You're gonna have to take this business underground. You're gonna have to create a website that looks professional. That. Uh, doesn't buckle under the traffic once it's mocked on Fox News repeatedly. And uh, you need to make it free because, at least for the first two weeks, because that's how long this idea is going to last. Where do you go? <laughs> uh, Brian, you go to squarespace.com. Now, listen, I know what you're saying. You're going to say it's impossible. There's nothing that could do all that for you. But, Brian, We've done a lot of research, and we found a lot of very startling facts to be true. All right, number like one, for example, Squarespace was invented by aliens who built the pyramids. I know Wait a minute, that's not true. This is true. This is science fact, Brian. Okay. <laughs> what else did these aliens build? I'm glad you're asking. Ham radios. They did. They did. They also built. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Uh, yeah. Papaya Splitters. And, uh, and Papyrus. Papyrus. That's um, right. Gunpowder. <laughs> Slip and Slides. Slip and Slides. Shoots and Ladders. Shoots and also Ladders. Alien Donkey Kong. Not 
the video game by the actual monkey for which the video game was based upon. What about Donkey Konga, the, the rhythm game where you actually beat on the drums? <laughs> no, that was invented by Nintendo, Brian. But Squarespace.com <laughs> is where you can make a website about any and all of these uh, inventions as they are of the same origin. Folks, I want you to go on over to Squarespace.com. You can create a website uh, just so lickety split. It's going to be free. Here's the thing. Uh, do you, do you other... know how fast it is? Get this. Look at this. This is how fast and easy it is to make a website on Squarespace. Pretty Jumbles just put in the chat room, she noticed that I was frustrated with my internet earlier. So she yes. figured Brian's always angry about something. Today it's his internet. And the question is, how angry is Brian Brushwood? And so today, <laughs> right now, Brian is so angry that he hulked out. Well, there we go, which has actually happened earlier in the show for people who didn't... Uh... Who didn't watch, only, but you only, actually are currently holed out. Yeah, the only difference is I didn't turn green. I just turned even pinker than usual, <laughs> unfortunately. You have exploded. It, it was it was what we like to refer to uh, on my on the Squarespace page, the 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 salmon wave of rage that uh <laughs> Brian is so angry that the fascinated Indonesian has locked him in a bunker for everyone's safety. <laughs> Uh, so, so there we go, folks. Here's the thing. You know, a lot of these fly-by-night internet companies, and they're like, hey, we got a free trial for you. But by the way, give me your credit card, you piece of garbage, or I'll take it off you. You know, Brian that's what they're saying. so angry that the aliens have to come to try to calm them down. <laughs> uh, but with Squarespace, you're not even going to worry about that, all right? You just go to squarespace.com. Use the offer code NSFW7, all right? I know last time we said a different code. Throw that one right out the window. He's NSFW7, okay? And Brian you're going to get so super... angry that Angry Birds look happy by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so there we go. Uh, you know, set up a site like that. Let, let, let us know how angry Brian is. And, uh, and, and, and please, indulge in this heavenly creation of cosmic delight, squarespace.com. Brian is so angry this clip art image already existed before the picnic started. <laughs> It's pretty angry. It's a pretty angry face you're, you're, you're mugging there. Okay, hold on. Uh, look, let's do this. I, I wanted originally, since we, we're what, episode 83 now? We're, we're well down this. We're coming up on just over two years of you and me doing this weekly shenanigan. And I kind of wanted to look back. But then I made the mistake of looking back and seeing how terrible those early episodes were. <laughs> so now... I want to look forward. Where do you see the show? Where do you see you and me five years from now? Or one year? Um, all right. Well, you want to do one year or five years? Oh, you, you pick. Either one. One of each, actually. All right. Well, let, let's see here. Here's, I, got, I got a prediction for one year. All right? Number one, uh, we're not talking to each other. Um, but you that doesn't like, stop don't us. like each other. No. This is what happens to every talk radio duo, you know? Like, they, they get success, they get a fan base, and then at some point, they hate each, they're in that, that, that gray zone where they hate each other, but they still need to be doing the show because that's, right. what, that's what keeps them. You acknowledge the, the show is, like, massively successful. It's just yes. you and me personally that can't stand each other. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of just us running over each other's jokes or fake. I, I like to think that, like, 50% of the show is fake laughter. So it, it's like, here, uh, let, let's, right let's just... now or in the future? <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. Screw you with that fake laughter. Your laughter oh, started off real, oh, but then, like, it had tweaks of, like, your genuine laughter, which all of a sudden made me think that all of your laughter has been fake on this show since the beginning. <laughs> Oh, that's Hang good. On, let me, I need to go update how angry is Brian Brushwood. <laughs> Give me just one second. <laughs> so fifty percent of the show is just is just us laughing at each other's jokes uh, because we really don't like each other, but we need to make this it is, seem like we're having fun. This is close to where we are now. That's all we do now. Yeah. The only difference is, I guess, in the future we just don't mean it anymore. We have a laughatron eight thousand. Well, yeah, I, and like it's really obvious for people who listen to the show a lot because we're laughing at things that aren't punchlines. Like, you're like, oh, I had to take uh, Penny into the doctor. She has strep throat. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> and a 
it just becomes like, and the bill was like hundreds of dollars. <laughs> This is a terrible idea. <laughs> oh, by the way, I would like to point out that right now, on Facebook, you just see right now they're actually building the ultimate fail. Remember, you called out and you asked for the ultimate fail story of putting everything together. <laughs> Chat Realm is actively, as a group, writing this together at this very moment. <laughs> uh, and then five years. All right, so five years on, we've reunited, broken up, and then reunited again. So we're back. <laughs> We're back into a good place because at this point, the money's too good. And we're also taking the show on the road. But we've evolved the show. It's not just me and you talking anymore. No. We figured we need a little bit more sizzle. Okay? You can't just go doing the same old song and dance expecting people to pay a shackle. Okay? I know. We got to bring some new to the table. I got them booked right here. You want to see them? Yes. <laughs> That's a, Look, a singing Tom there's Barrett. No, there's no audio for it because all, there we go. I turned, it, I turned it down so I wouldn't hear echoes going on. Son of a bitch. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. So, let, I'm just going to let you know. Aquatic Adventures. That's going to be that fun. Mean? For All right? We have dolphins, manatees, and seals that comprise. Now, instead of me fake laughing at your jokes, a dolphin just jumps over you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm sitting there like... Like uh, William Shatner style, deadpan delivering jokes in a way that derived no laughter, but the punctuation is a, is a dolphin does a flip over me each time. Yes. In fact, I no longer talk on the show. I sit in the corner <laughs> so with a this button. This is because five years is so far to the future that we don't communicate in the same way as a society in, anymore. <laughs> no, because here's the thing. Is it became... See, remember I was telling you uh, in the one-year scenario um, yeah. where... Where I was, I was, I was barely listening to you, and I was just updating my Facebook status about how bored yes. I was. People yes. started as as media became more, um, you know, uh, uh, collected. People would just I, they would they would expect that as part of the experience. So that became yeah. part of the show. So now all my jokes are talking about how bored I am on Facebook. It's it's so, a very awkward thing to listen to. So like, like literally the whole experience is I walk out, I sit on a stool and I start to try to tell a funny story and there's laughter at all these moments when I think it's because I'm telling good jokes. But meanwhile, I just see 8,000 glowing faces as everybody's reading your updates and you mocking me. That becomes the entire experience of the show. Yeah. So the crowd will laugh in awkward moments. Like you'll be in the middle of talking and they'll laugh like a genuine laughter. Um, and then a dolphin right over your head. Uh, and then the a only seal. fail here uh, is that you indicate that there's still a Facebook five years from now. That's the part I'm not believing. Is oh, that no. all Google oh, no. Plus, baby? Did you not get the memo? Oh. Come on, Brian. Really? Are we gonna? Are we gonna all? Sure. Yeah. You know, and uh, that's why I'll, I'll talk about it on my Jaiku. You know. And... <laughs> Wait till the rest of my Friendster cluster hears about this. <laughs> When I let my Although isn't isn't actually isn't though. isn't like the back end of Google Plus Chaiku? Isn't that like the, the Twitter stream element of it? Uh, uh, I don't know. I thought it was like what was it Orkut or Cut? Was that first one that they did? Uh, Orgasm? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a different I think it's a different thing. Or yeah, oh I'm gonna go to Thesaporia. More like Di diaspora. Diaspora is what it's more called. like die who gives all right here's uh first of all you're totally wrong about what happens in the future i'll tell you all what right, happens go ahead go first ahead. of all number one uh you and i only get more successful all right become... well now it's the same we're not so different you and i <laughs> but what i'm saying is at some point we hit the the glass ceiling of podcasts it turns out there's only so successful you can get as a podcaster and that's when you and i become post-ironic hipster rap artists and we suck. So like everyone else on the internet. Rapping, but <laughs> so we go from one very stick. crowded genre to an even more crowded genre. No, no, no. But, but, but here's the thing, though. It's like, it's like we are not very good rappers, and everybody knows it. But that's why they love us, because we suck so bad. And that okay. is how we become super successful. We tap into that. We're up there, and like first of all, we buy everyone PBR. And we're like, hey, guys, I'm going to try really hard. And everyone laughs at that. And then yeah. I do try really hard, and because I'm lousy, everybody cheers even louder because I suck so bad. You with me? All right, all right. I'm down. So can you give me? Uh, let's just paint a picture. 
you're on stage. Uh, what what kind of hot lines are you dropping on stage? Uh, okay, here we go. This is this is. Uh, I, I I was gonna save this for five years from now, but it's like. Um, well, I thought, I thought you know this was I'm, one year. I'm tempted to start my video with uh, my rap video with, "Hey everybody, I'm here to say." <laughs> you know, like, like the bad, the terrible 1990s every rap. Yes. Speaking of which, you already dropped some dope rhymes regarding the apocalypse, the rapture rap. I did, and I appreciate you bringing that up in the segment where we're talking about terrible rap music. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is like mutually disturbed destruction is what it is. You're like, oh, I got you. Why don't you do that rap for us, Brian? We're like, well, how about I describe what that rap would look like and bring up the fact that you actually did such a rap. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'll bring us both down in this business. <laughs> Hey, everybody, have you heard the news? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was supposed to be. That we terrible. all lose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Crucial wax like, in the chat room. Ah, yes, this fake laughter is wonderful jocularity. <laughs> <laughs> well, how, how delightful. Such um, flawed laughter. <laughs> I don't know what they're drawing over here in the chat realm but man they are they're changing all over this we got all these anonymous authors who are crowdsourcing an entire story over here i'm kind have of you read any of it no i haven't read any of it here's what i'm going to do i'm going to i am going to read it during the music guest and then maybe we'll read it at the end and I don't know if this is a t statement of how awesome the chat realm is or how bored they are with the show. They're, they're like, this sucks. Let's write a short story. Just to pass the time. Come on. By the way, by the way, this is also part of our show in five years is where the audience attempts to do a better show. And then we reveal what they've done at the end. And it's always better than what we've done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why are they writing Pol Pot? I don't know. <laughs> and then Rooker had sex with Jury's mother. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, I don't know how, how speculative that is. That might, in fact, be true. I mean, it's true. It's, it's true. This is amazing, though, man. It's like if you've ever watched them come together to create. All right, all right. Let's stop showing it live on the right, air, Brian. Done, 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 it's, done. I will not. That's not a good idea. And Scott Johnson remarked, F a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Um, like, yeah, right. they actually, they've already provided art and everything. This is going to be an amazing story. <laughs> what is that of us? It's me and you seeming to be hugging each other midair in suits. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. The greatest fail ever. This is metal. Uh, okay, so, I'm sorry, what were we talking about again? Uh, well, we were talking about your scenario. About us oh. rapping. Yeah, no, we become rap artists, right? And first of all, we never develop rhythm, but what we do is we develop a supernatural ability to not care that it's genuinely mean-spirited laughter that's hurled at us from then on. And it's like, for some reason, for some reason, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually shut down this document because I'm over Can here watching please, the changes. Can you please, yes, stop doing Sorry. that. Stop going okay. to that. <clears throat> yeah, no, but that's that's what we do is we rap about we rap about how angry we are with our internet connections. <laughs> we rap about we rap about bizarre scenarios where it's a wonderful life has a sequel and it involves convincing Hitler that he needs to kill himself. <laughs> and we rap I about I love that it's such a dark it. turn for Clarence though. Like Clarence spent that one time trying to get Jimmy Stewart not to kill himself and then like one day he's like Man, that was pretty sweet. But what if I just went heel? What if I was just trying to convince somebody way? to kill himself? It's like, you know, there's two sides to every power, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's like, like oh, look, it's oh, I'm sorry. You thought Clarence was soft? You think Clarence can't roll hard? You know what happens? He, he rolls up to heaven. He gets his wings, <laughs> and he turns all metal. He gets his wings, and meanwhile, the other, the other angels who are, like, smoking, they're all like, hey, uh, good job on, uh, you know, making that one cat feel good about himself. Yeah. They're like, well, thank you. You're like, it was like, yeah, that's all you got, huh? Some guy feels good about himself, doesn't jump off a bridge. Congratulations. I'm sure 12 people cared. It's like, well, what are you yeah. talking about? Is there something? And they're like, dude, we just got a bulletin from the future. Guess what? There's a cat that's so bad. He's the baddest <laughs> of the bad. 
and you got a chance. He goes on to take over the entire world and kill everyone. He's already deep in. He's already killed millions. You better get out there. You want to prove your salt? Go out there and fix them. And he goes down. But there's like a montage of Clarence getting all metal. Starts yeah. smoking. And he starts shooting heroin and his wings turn black. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he have to on. pick up a drug problem? <laughs> Listen, if you want to go to the dark side, you go all the way to the dark side, son. <laughs> Clarence, don't play with half measures. If you're going to take on... The baddest of the bad, you got to get all the, you go all in, you take those chips, you push them in. You got to hulk out. That's what it took for Clarence to take on the baddest of the bad. And so that's what and he, he did. Down. And then one day he just shows up while Hitler's on a bridge and he's like, uh, like, yo, uh, you think about killing yourself? And Hitler's like, no. And he's like, well, you should. <laughs> exactly. He's like, exactly. He's just like, let me show you what the world would be like without you. And then it just, he's so sad. He's like, mein Gott. And then that's it. And then, yeah, flash forward to uh, him in the bunker. The end scene, the end scene of Clarence Two, um, is him leaning back with his black wings out and just, just ladies, as far as you can see, all <laughs> laying up on him and a blunt in his fingers. Totally. Why? 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 Poor Clarence. <laughs> no, dude, Clarence has gone metal. When you've saved the whole planet from the baddest person who ever existed. You know what? You could pretend you live in California 24 hours a day. That's so all. That's I'm what, like, so he shows back up to heaven. And it's like normally heaven's pretty strict about the no banging random strangers or smoking weed uh, thing. But like Clarence rolls Probably up having killed Hitler, and God's like, you know what? Just rock and roll. Do whatever you want, Clarence. You want to? Yeah, no, it's fine. No, smoke weed. It's cool. Bro, you want uh, you some know friends? I got sure, a good yeah. question for the chat room. Somebody asked, uh, Cypal Kurt asked Brian, if this movie comes out, what is the best way to watch it? Uh, I, you know, it might come out in th 3D in the theaters, but after that, it's probably going to be pretty expensive because it's going to be an indie film. Yeah, it it's going to cost probably $75 to watch it all the time. Um, and but you know and the price crazy, never if there was down. a way it could get worldwide distribution and anybody could watch it for free? Uh, well, you could do that? Well, I mean, if there was a way... If there was a way like you could have a membership to some secret clubhouse and you got all you could eat unlimited movies, award winning documentaries, uh, fantastic movies and incredible television shows where you could watch whole seasons straight through and they could be delivered not instantly to your PC, to your iPad, to your iPhone, to your Xbox, your Wii, the Nintendo Wii. No, that's wrong. Wii, no, that's maybe. actually wrong. That's false. They don't have huh? that. That doesn't exist. Didn't, it never oh. existed. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> Justin, doesn't Netflix do that? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, funny. I would like to point, <laughs> like to point out. <laughs> I would, like to, <laughs> I would like to point out. Netflix.com slash Twitter will get you your free 30-day trial of Netflix, folks. Listen, you, you got all these things on the internet. You used to have eight bucks a month. Listen, you can peel that off your goddamn wallet. I'm sure you spend that on all sorts of stuff. Like when you're trying to build your diorama that time that Clarence came down and convinced Hitler to put a gun in his mouth. I swear, right now, anyone who builds that diorama, it will be featured on just about every show for the next three months. <laughs> Build a diagram of Clarence. In and the then sequel. shoot a documentary of it and then sell that documentary to Netflix. Listen, Brian, uh, I've been doing a lot of watching stuff on Netflix lately. No, you, you haven't. Know what You've what never I've been heard watching? Netflix. Austin Powers 3, gold member. You want to know what's not that? Back? I never made it out for that. That's one I would not be caught dead paying full price for at the movie theater. But... I know there's a lot of jokes I don't get because I didn't see it. And now I could go see it. All it does is cost me 90 minutes. Yes, and it's not that good of a movie. Spoiler alert. <laughs> However, here's the beautiful thing about Netflix. You're not going to watch, like you go down, even like you go down to Redbox, right? Let's say you go down to your Walmart and you pick up a Redbox movie and you watch and you're like, this eats five pounds of balls. <laughs> 
Yeah, you, know, you still got to spend that dollar and you got to go back. And it's like the movie won. Now the movie's just sitting at you going like, eh, I just wasted two hours of your life. Eh, and take the money. Home. And more importantly, your dollar vote. And there's no feedback. You don't get to come back and say, well, Redbox, you have my money, but I wish there was a way for me to let you know that that movie was not very good. Guess what? With Netflix, you've already paid, what, your eight bucks or so a month. You watch whatever you want, and they want to hear if it sucks, man. Be like, dude, dude uh, you know what? We did not need a sequel to It's a Wonderful Life. One star. <laughs> and now they know. And by the way, listen, I mean, we talk a lot about the instant streaming thing because I know that's how me and Brian take in most of our Netflix movies. But they have every movie and TV show ever created on disc, including the prequel to It's a Wonderful Life 2, It's a Wonderful Reich, the original <laughs> 1946 Christmas classic, It's a Wonderful Life. You can go on great. it. At, yeah. And by the way, genres it, of It's a Wonderful Life, classic movies, sci-fi fantasy, classic sci-fi, and fantasy. You know, that it sounds like some sci-fi. That's an alternate that reality world, world, right? Check it out, folks. Netflix.com slash Twitch. You're going to get 30 days, okay? You know what you can do in 30 days? You can build, a, you can build an empire, all right? You can, you can prove once and for all that Redbox is funded by drug money that is culled from children. I, That's a fact. Did, did you just associate drug money and children with our sponsor, Netflix? No, I associated them with Redbox, their competitor. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, then, yes, we can <laughs> confirm that Redbox is associated with those other things that we totally made up. Yes. Uh, but in all seriousness, here's the thing, party people, is these guys, they look at the number, and they know how many people are subscribing. Maybe you already have it. It's time to get a friend. And you tell your friend specifically, use the code Netflix.com slash twit. Twit. And in fact... I don't know. Maybe, maybe you got a friend who recently gave up. Say, freaking get back on. 30 days. Netflix.com slash twit. Do whatever it takes to get people to Netflix.com. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to point out, Justin, that at the beginning of this ad read, all I could think of in the midst of my throes of actual laughter was that I was actually <laughs> laughing because you were fake laughing. And because you had awesome fake you know, laughter is why I was actually laughing. You know what's funny is I started really laughing in the middle of the fake laughing. And then I started <laughs> yeah, you know fake laughing. And you're yeah. like, pull it together, man. This is supposed to be fake. Come on. I know. Because I started real laughing. And then it's like, there's no way it's not funny unless I start choking on the fake laughs. So I forced myself to start choking. <laughs> um, that is awesome. Brian, listen. We talked a lot about the future on this episode of of uh nsfw show but i would like to welcome a couple people that i have known for a very 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 long time folks uh in the latest edition of the summer music series we have an upcoming band based out of new york city that uh i am i am very 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 excited to have on fun fact kids add it to the wikipedia uh the two of the members of this band uh i was in a uh, a couple sketch comedy trips with and it delights me to no end that they can be on here uh playing don't you know ladies and gentlemen live from manhattan the first ever full band that we have had on nsfw show otsego take it away boys good evening thank you we're otsego let's let's do this
gentlemen, Odd Seagull. They got a weird name, so here's how you spell it. O-T-S-E-G-O. -E Do me a favor and go right over to twitter.com slash music. Follow them right GD now. Or if you want to listen to, uh, to that song as well as five others, go on over to otsego.bandcamp.com. Uh, uh, Jake, oh, my God. You guys rocked everybody so hard that their torso fell off and their heart congealed on the floor. And that's my goal is to completely uh, disfigure people with, with this music. I well, you, cer having... you certainly did. And now they're yeah. going to... They're like Legos, they're going to be able to fit into other corresponding pieces because there's going to be a cabinet in their chest. Let's build a new race together. <laughs> yes, <laughs> finally. We will. Yeah. Uh, ah. yeah. A race of corresponding people perforated to perfection. Yeah. Uh, uh, that I'm was with... awesome. That was awesome. And I'll tell you what, I heard it third generation uh, from a Skype going to another Skype going into my cell phone connection and it still rocked hard. Where can people see all the highest quality videos? Uh, we, we have a, a YouTube account up, youtube.com, Atsigo Music. Uh, just a couple things up there right now, but we'll put some more there up as we get them. Chat room's already blowing it up right now. Atsigo Music on YouTube. Uh, dude, that is, that is awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, how do, now, how do, you, how do you know Justin? You guys have, like, history, right? Oh, yeah, a deep in story history. We, we, uh, yes. I had a sketch comedy group in college, and and uh, and Justin came on board. Uh, we did, yeah, we did it for two years in college. We we were in a musical together. Uh, yeah, you guys would do the Justin skit, and then Justin would walk out and do his uh, that owned a supermarket and that brought the house down. And uh, yeah, no, Jake, yeah, Jake yeah. wrote a musical that that I was the villain in. It was uh, yeah. it was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we lived in New York together for a few okay, years doing so comedy down now here. To see any kind of reenacting of that business. Well, there, there is, I don't know, is, is there video? Is there video of, of the musical? I know there was a video, like a physical videotape. I don't know if anything has survived from that, those performances. Oh, no, it's, I have it, man. I have the whole thing, <laughs> full, full length. Wow, that's... Of you singing in a tuxedo for two hours. <laughs> Well, uh, we might have to get that up uh, at some point. And I just want to point out uh, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, for the, uh, the, the, the thousands, thousands of people watching uh, live, as well as those that will uh, listen to this and watch it in podcast form. Jammer B, if you can go back to the Otsego uh, cam, the drummer in the back, which, by the way, the first ever drum solo in the history of this podcast, uh, yeah. that, that of Dan Luddy. Uh, who, who right now, uh, even... Even even with the mic in front of it, you can tell has no neck, which is really what his claim to fame <laughs> years. Uh, so so there we go. Uh, and, and Dan Dan was in Penguins Without Pants as well. It really uh, again, guys. It it really is. It, it brings me no end of joy that you guys were able to come on here and rock so hard. Everybody again, Twitter.com/slash Otsego Music or uh, Otsego.bandcamp.com. And to spell that again, that is O T S. E G O, please check them out because they so richly deserve it. Uh, guys, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Dude, you guys thank rocked you. it, man. Thank you, Brian, too. Hells to the yes. All right, Justin. Uh, are we out of time? What's our story, man? I can't that is we, about. We, our signal stayed up the entire time. It's barely holding on by a thread. It looks like total crap from where I'm sitting, but we have made it through this whole thing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, folks, if you have bared with this episode, I am so glad that we were able to at least deliver a kick-ass music group at the end of it. Uh, we, hold we know on, that this hold one... on. I think we learned some valuable truths, not only about ourselves, but about your fake <laughs> laughter and about the rockin' sequel to It's a Wonderful Life coming to theaters and eventually to Netflix and to streaming. It's I a wonderful life. I think this has been a very positive experience. Absolutely. Uh, but until next week, ladies and gentlemen... This is Justin Robert Young. Did you say your name? Oh, oh, hey, I'm Brian Brushwood. I'm sorry, I was confused. Die in a fire. It... Yeah, see you next Tuesday.
Should I read the story? <laughs> the greatest fail ever. This is definitely something, but I'm not sure what. A cat crack special report. <laughs> In Berlin, free Germany during the Cold War. On the first day of school, or possibly a couple days after, while wearing a trench coat and carrying a bloody chainsaw, young Rustin Jobber Old, an obviously fictional character, but probably not, ran towards class. Rustin had been trying to learn fire eating for years now. He had studied everywhere but Cuba and certain provinces <laughs> in Indonesia. They're adding so many pictures, I've got to jump off. Everything. See, yeah, we need to, we need to actually shut it down before we read, read it. it. Never mind. There's, there's no way. It's getting all crazy. Although there was some good stuff here. Um, Rustin had been trying to learn fighter eating for years. On the way, he ran into Mindy. Beautiful Mindy. Perfect Mindy. Lactose and hippie intolerant Mindy. The most populous girl in the class. I think they meant popular. Uh, since she was a nice young lass, she, the quiet type, but with a complexion like the late OMG Chad's backside. And a theme song to match. She was everything that old had ever dreamed of. <laughs> Don't look uncomfortable. <laughs> Mindy smiled and waved like an ambient walrus in her cute little diamond club shirt that she obviously got from the most trendy store on Bone Earth. P.D. Elahanties. <laughs> Young old darted faster, smiling and accidentally sneezing out a little blood. Oh, I've been locked out of the document. Look at that. I just got locked out of the document. <laughs> well, that's as much as I was able to read. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this story. Um, hey, can I just read a random, uh, a random two sentences? Sure. Oh, wait, hold on. You already got to that. Let me read a random two sentences then. Um, how about this? Here's the rap. What's up? I'm the Schwartz, and I'm here to say I got a show on Twit, but I ain't gonna stay. Cause I got a big ninja son, and I whip it out just for fun. Test, test, test. <laughs> Time water cable can suck that. What? They ain't worthy of a tummy stick. Bouncing up and down with a roundhouse kick. My heart is beating. Come on, lick, lick, lick. Lick in that dugout. No matter how nappy. Ninja John son. Slap me, pappy. Random, <laughs> random ass pappin' can make me happy. But that's okay. You know we was nasty. Fun, 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 fun. 2 a.m., y'all, and I'm still here. Time on a cable provokes my fear. Still streaming on the web bird nets. What's the heck? The chat realm best yet. <laughs> Time on a cable, made me scream and shout. Oh, F word. Hold on. I lost it. <laughs> Time on a cable, made me scream and shout. You can suck their thumb and moan and pout. Pubes over here, pubes over there, rubbing on Bri's face and his spicy and <laughs> spiky F and hair. <laughs> Splashing Popot on your face. LOL, what? Yeah, toast! <laughs> I was a bigger fan of this. Uh, oh my god, <laughs> we we gotta stop this right now. Oh my god, what? I was unprepared for that. I had this thing <laughs> in my ear, and all of a sudden, everything exploded with pain. Can, can we dial back the uh, the squeal just a little bit on this one? Uh, that's a pretty awesome freeze, though.